What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today I want to talk to you guys about water changes. Um, specifically how to do them, why to do them, and when you should do them. And the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is why water changes are so important in this hobby. Um, so you put your fish in your tank, they're in there hanging out for a while, you're watching them, everything's going good. And then what's going to happen is your water quality is going to start to diminish. You're going to start building up um, ammonia or nitrites uh, if your tank is still cycling and nitrates if your tank is already cycled your fish are going to eat, they're going to use the bathroom, ammonia is going to get converted and you're going to end up with nitrites that start building up um, so what you're going to do is you're going to change water right? so you start taking water out of your tank and you're going to put new water in so taking water out of your tank what you're going to be doing is you're going to reduce the nitrates um, the nitrites and the ammonia if there's any of them in there and you're going to bring them down to a lower level. So you take this tank here and you drain it down 50% and refill it, right? So if you add 100 as an average nitrates um, and you do a 50% water change, you will reduce your nitrates down to 50 parts per million. Now, I don't think any aquarium should go over 40 parts per million. Um, you should definitely do a water change if you get to that point. So if your tank was 40 parts per million and you did a 50%, uh, it would be a 25% or 25 ppm. And if you did a 25% water change, it would be around 35 parts per million. Um, so when you reintroduce new water back into the tank, you're introducing clean water, right? So by introducing clean water, removing old water and introducing clean water, you're going to be reducing the amount of minerals that are also in that water. Um, so overall, you're going to be reducing your total dissolved solids. So that could be any uh, heavy metals or potassium, calcium, anything in the water. You'll be removing excess and introducing new clean water, which may have some of that in there, but it's not going to build up. Um, Another benefit of doing water changes is when you remove water and add new water in, the new water is going to be doing a lot of splashing on the top and the surface of the water you already have in there, which is going to be introducing a lot of oxygen and carbon dioxide, which both of which are good for plants and your fish. Um, so that is an added bonus to that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is do not just top off your tank. So if you see you've got a tank and it looks like this one right here where you can start seeing the light across the top because the water's evaporating and the level of water is going down, you don't want to just come in and, hey, I'm going to refill that and just top it off. The reason is you're not going to remove any of the, the excess minerals in there or the excess waste, um, ammonia, nitrates, nitrates. You're not going to remove any of that. You're just going to top off the water, add minerals back into the water. And if you guys don't know, minerals do not just evaporate out of the water. With the water, they stay in the tank. So you're going to generally increase the amount of minerals in the tank, and you're going to repeatedly do that until they uh, become unsafe, and the levels are not safe for your fish or your plants anymore. Uh, your fish will start dying. Plants could get nutrient locked, and it's never a good thing. You're going to start growing algae. Just do the water change. It's a lot easier, and it's better. Um, when should you water change? So when you should water change is anytime you notice that your nitrates are over 40 parts per million. Um, and the best way to do that, I use the API master test kit, the liquid test kit. Um, you get more tests per dollar off of that than you would for test strips. But if you're gonna use test strips, I personally recommend for the amount of money you're paying, you take the long strips, if the strips are vertically stood like this, Cut them with a pair of scissors right down the middle so you get two smaller tests and then use those to test. Um, if your tank is over 40 parts per million, I would do a water change um, just to keep the nitrates lower. Lower is better. Um, and then you also want to do a water change if you ran any medications in your tank, if you ran any um, aquarium salts, uh, erythromycin, um, general cure, ICX, anything like that. You want to do water changes when the directions on those medications tell you to. Um, and it's the same like nitrates. When you do the water change, it removes however however many percent of the tank you remove, that's how many percent of that uh, medication or salt the water change removes. Um, 
Now the last part is how do you water change? For those of you who are new to the hobby, um, if you got a smaller tank, the best way to do a water change for a smaller tank would probably be just a siphon and a bucket. So you put your siphon in the tank, grab your hose, and this is the way I do it, just suck on the end of the hose till the water starts flowing, put the hose in the bucket, fill the bucket up with water, take the siphon out, and then do a water change. Dump out your old water, fill the bucket back up with new water, and slowly pour it back into the tank. Making sure that your temperature has been acclimated on your water, make sure they're very similar, and use dechlorinator if you do not have well water. Um, so as far as small tanks, that's how I would do that. If you have a larger tank, say 75, 55, 125 behind me here, um, I would invest in a Python or an Aquion water changing system. And the way those work is they have a little adapter that hooks up to your kitchen sink or your bathroom sink or any sink in your house or even to a hose spigot outside. And there's a little valve on it that you um, open and turn your sink on. So when your water turns on, it's going to create a siphon and it's going to draw water out of your tank and run it down the drain of wherever you have it hooked up. And when you want to refill your tank and you've reached the amount of water that you want to remove, you just close that valve and then it forces water back into your tank and refills it. Um, so one thing to watch with that is again your water temperature and upon refilling, you, as soon as you start putting water back into that tank, you want to add your dechlorinator if you do not have well water. Um, and then just fill your tank back up and you've successfully done a water change. Um, now if you have multiple tanks like I do here and something I wish I was able to do but unfortunately I can't um, is an auto water change system. Now an auto water change system is relatively easy to set up. It is a little labor intensive um, but it's not hard. So you basically drill these tanks and you just drill into the back. Now you can't drill on a tempered tank, it has to be plate glass. Um, you drill a hole in the back of the tank and then out of that hole you have a piece of PVC that comes out and up so that when the water reaches a certain level, if the top of the PVC is here, it spills over into that and down and out of drain. Now the only reason that it would overflow is if you were adding water to it, which you could just have a water line run through all of your tanks. You turn one faucet on, it starts flooding your tanks, the water starts overflowing, and instead of overflowing out of your tanks, it overflows out that drain and down the drain. And that's a very simple and rudimentary auto water chain system that I wish I had in here, but I don't. Um, and that's more ideal for multiple large fish tanks or fish rooms. Um, so I think that's pretty much it on water changes, guys. They're very important. Make sure you do them. Your fish will love you. Your plants will love you. And um, until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys, for watching my video. If you like my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button right there. If you want to see more of my content, you can click either two of these links right here, and you can go see more of my videos. If you really want to, go ahead and get that bell on down below. And anytime I post a video, you guys will get a notification for it. But until then, we will see you guys in the next video.